Hey there. Um, we just finished up um, working with the supply and demand curve. Um, we did part A, working through our example, where we had the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and total social gain at the equilibrium point. Um, but now we're going to do part B. So we have the same information, but we have something a little bit different. So producers form a cartel. Basically, a cartel can pr can control the line of production. Um, so that's more of a um, a business term. Um, but it says they're going to control that and set the quantity to five and a price of 185. And we're supposed to do the same thing we did before. We're supposed to uh, calculate the consumer surplus, producer surplus, and total social gain. So let's see if we can look at what we've got here. Over here, if we look at our graph, we're setting the quantity at 5 and the price at 185, about here. So this is the point. So let's see right here what we can do and what we've got. So <clears throat> um, let's kind of draw our little line here. So it's not an equilibrium point, but it is a point um, between what people are willing to pay and what is being charged. So we want to calculate two things. And let me kind of draw this out to combine it into curves or contain it into curves. I apologize. So what we have here is above this green line, we have what, oops, sorry. We have what people were willing to pay that they did not have to pay. That's the consumer surplus. Um, let's go ahead and calculate that. So the consumer surplus when we restrict the number of items that can be sold. Um, so we'll set up our integration It'll run from 0 to, in this case, 5. And let's see, what do we have? We have the top curve, which is the demand, which is 210 minus Q squared. And then we'll subtract off the bottom of that, which is this green line, which is just 185. So everybody is, <clears throat> based on the quantity that was set at 5, everybody is paying $185 a piece. Some people were willing to spend $200. Some people were only uh, willing to spend $185. So we're getting the total um, in there um, above that price that was set. So let's see here. We'll clean this up a little bit. It goes from 0 to 5. 210 minus 185 is 25 minus Q squared. So let's move this up and we'll move it back down in a minute. Um, but if we integrate this, we would get 25 Q minus one third Q cubed from zero to five. So we can plug these in, let um, Q equal five, which will be 25 times five minus one third and five cubed is 125. And then we'll subtract off the under part, <clears throat> which we will let uh, Q equals zero. So this will give us zero minus zero. Now keep in mind, I combined these two um, constants up here, 200 minus 185. So just to make sure you're clear, it's not saying that the area under this green line is zero because we've already taken care of that. Okay. Let's go back. So if we do the math here, um, we get 125 minus, and that'll be 125 over 3. I'm going to put that in the calculator. So I'm matching buttons. And I got... Um, 
83.3 as the consumer surplus. So after getting the consumer surplus of 83.3, let's go in and let's look at the producer surplus. So the producer works off of the supply. So they're the blue line, so we're going right here. So this is what they're charging up here at the green uh, horizontal line. Um, but they were only requiring or needing to make the blue curve down here. So all of this that I just shaded is surplus. So let's uh, make ourselves some room here. So we're going to say um, the producer. That's ugly. Let's uh, try and fix it. producer surplus would be uh, the integral from, since we've restricted this thing, uh, 0 to 5. And that will be the top curve, which is 185, minus the supply curve, which is the blue line at the bottom, which is 10 plus Q squared. So let's just kind of come down and work with that. So still at bounds of 0 to 5. So let's go ahead and say 185 minus 10 is 175. But don't forget that negative is distributed, so it's minus Q squared. No integration has taken place yet, so we still got a little bit of work to do. So reversing our power rules, 175Q minus one third q cubed and now that is running from zero to five so let's put our numbers in let q equal five so what do we get we get 175 times five minus one third times five cubed Ooh. and then minus when we let QB0, sorry. So when we plug that in, it'll be 0 minus 0, so that's not super important. Well, it is important, but it doesn't really change anything. So now I'm going to pick up my calculator again. You don't see it, but 175 times 5 is 875. Um, 5 cubed is 125. We'll divide that by 3. Um, minus 41.7. So we're going to say 875 minus 41.7. So we will get 833.3. So let's see, let's go back up to our graph. Um, our consumer surplus was 83.3. Our supplier or producer surplus was 833.3. So if we look at our graph, come on. Um, it looks like the blue shaded region is much greater than the red shaded region. So that makes sense. Okay. So then we want to do total social gain. So uh, that should be those two pieces of the curve added together. Total social gain. So we could write out the formula for this, but we know that we have um, found the consumer surplus and we'll add it to the producer surplus. And this was 83.3. This was 
33.3. I'll go check. Let's make sure both of those are right from memory. Yes. So I'm going to go to the calculator. And I get 916.6. So that's the total social gain. Which, if you go back to the previous video, we could compare that to where we had the equilibrium point and we got that the um, total social gain was uh, 1,333.3, which at the equilibrium point would be the maximum social gain. So we would have expected a number less than that 1,300 value. And we got um, 916. Yes. So this makes sense. All right. We'll save part C for the next problem, next video.